we met Lagos a few years ago. Interestingly, I was in an art gallery as well. Mm -hmm. And just I and a few friends were pulling a prank on Richard that we owned the gallery, you know. And um, we all went downstairs for drinks and he sketched my friend in less than about five minutes. And we were all really like mind blown by this uh, immediate artist who was, who we, who we assumed was an expatriate person in Lagos, you know, as usual. We randomly talked about what I do as a photographer. I showed him some photographs and a very good friendship started that eventually blossomed into collaboration. What happened like a sporadic back and forth, but with emails, we could express uh, lengthy texts on the topic. So using uh, Google, Google Slides and Google Docs, I would send him some pictures. He will move some things around and I'm seeing it in real time, you know? The first body of work we did was our initial point of um, collaboration together as an artist, which was uh, not necessarily sharing the same canvas, but like a side-by-side -side comparison of our opinion of the city. Mine through the photograph and his through um, his paintings and his drawings as a response to the city. It wasn't until we got the first two shows out of the way that is the one we did at Gavin Project and uh, the one we did at Radisson Blue in Lagos before we now moved on to sharing the same canvases. I think that was discovered in your studio, if I remember right. It was uh, about the time I visited that we figured out, oh, what if we try and do this together on one platform? I think the only other time it popped up on my radar was when Azu um, introduced us through the Arts Meet project. Before then, I'd not done any point-by-point -point collaboration with anybody. But Richard was definitely the first. And so far, still the only one I'm collaborating with, to be honest because of how the dynamics of um, the work has come over the years. Starting as, as a physical contact, uh, moving into a, a strong dialogue, and then slowly getting to the point where, where we established a dialogue, not just between ourselves, but between the works. And then moving from a situation in the early shows, I think you visited our, our show at, uh, in Mabinem, mm -hmm. uh, where the, the works were in dialogue with each other as we were in dialogue to a point where, as Logos described, we were actually experimenting on, on creating joint uh, pieces of work. And I think the last, the, the most recent two uh, collaborative um, uh, pieces we worked on and shows we were in were very much joint pieces, which, which creates a whole different uh, level of engagement with each other's aesthetic judgment and, and uh, intentionality in, in the works we produce. You also started bringing in some of your WhatsApp conversations into the actual physical work. And then you called the series Glocal. Maybe if you can also touch on that idea as something that's important in your collaboration. The, the whole idea of Glocal was, was precisely um, what I think we were both about and, and probably still are about in that we, we engage globally, uh, we engage on global platforms, we're very much part of a global um, world, as, as this call is in fact part of a global world. Uh, but we're at the same time deeply engaged with the local context in, in the different cities in which we live in and to which we respond as, as artists. That was the first time we actively thought about, hey, you're not going to do on the covers, I'm not going to print on paper. What other kind of material could we try out? You know what I mean? So we were experimenting with, uh, there was an intention to try out a different form of material because at the time, this was Richard sort of figuring out a way to finally do something on the wood when the image finally stays on the wood. For someone who was primarily a painter, worrying about printing, you know, there was a lot of nice crossover. It was, it was the first time we were trying to use things that had like a cross-cultural relationship to talk. For example, the work you saw from Mabune had like uh, wood pellets from container, which and these wood pellets are used for stacking things up in, uh, in shipping containers, which is very, 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 very like a uh, better breaker to Lagos, especially being a huge um, commercial hub. And this was Richard also traveling into Lagos all the time. And the kind of material we used at that point, we did not think much about it, but it turned out to be far more potent. And that was where the topic of Glocal came. But a lot of the results happened long after we had created the work. For example, when those photographs were taken, they were not taken from a place of um, this would connect with somebody in South Africa. 
they were not taking from a place of, oh, I'm shooting this satellite dish because it references a globalization conversation. Yeah. They were taking from an artistic um, curiosity of, oh, that looks interesting from a visual standpoint of form and shape and lines, as the case may be. And a lot of Richard's drawing too, which, are, which references the Gmail, for example, it would be in, it would be flying through countries, and it will write like a long email of uh, its thought process in the air, and it makes complete sense when which, when when the word local came around, it was just perfect because the one at the closer than ever was featuring lights from the national stadium. From photography standpoint, that's like literally illuminating a whole new world. Yeah, so I, I guess I've been very fortunate in that my career as, a, as an artist has, has coincided with um, a business career that allows me to spend a lot of time uh, flying around and Africa. And because I have this uh, rather uh, unique ability to or spend uh, a lot of time flying above the continent, but at the same time, uh, the artist in me takes me down to, um, to the villages and, and into a lot of the kind of lower income uh, parts of the, the cities in Africa. I'm always interested in combining uh, different views of, of, of the world, uh, the view from 50,000 feet, literally, uh, to the view uh, from a, a beer crate outside a shack uh, in Kampala or Lagos or, or any other of the cities that I'm fortunate enough to visit. So I'm always interested at this moment in, in, in history, both the ability to view the world from so many different angles and so, uh, close together. This uh, this engagement um, with with the world is both global and local in that uh, not only is it a physical above and in the world, but it's also physically with people, but also communicating remotely as we are doing at the moment. And um, however those realities work, there's always people involved, you know, uh, at, at the other end of the, the, the picture. Mm. Uh, and so that's that's been a really important theme in my work for uh, from before global and, and continues to, to this day. Yep. I mean, what's the world without people? <laughs> Logo, what and, did you uh, just photograph? Uh, uh, yeah, so there's a nice uh, color condition that, that I noticed from my car. Some guy was walking past and the colors was contrasting nicely. So, yeah. As you noticed, uh, there's less people out in the world, which is a big problem for me. But it's also not, a, <laughs> not necessarily a big problem because uh, what, 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 what it created was another reason to now ask myself that what was the point behind pointing the cameras at these places in the first place. And the truth is, it's the people, it's the energy they bring to the space. It's how, I mean, the, the urban plan of Lagos is a very theatric one. But even that in itself can feel very hollow without some human form happening around it. You can look outside this window and you can see that guy sitting there by himself with a mask. And all that kind of random theater that presents itself pulls me to Lagos. But in the last couple of weeks since the lockdown, um, I've been shooting as well because I got commissioned to do a gig for um, an agency in New York. I've been shooting and a lot of it has been very surreal. But at the same time, it provides a different kind of beauty that I did not consider before now. For a place that I, I was the most dense place in the world and it could never go quiet, it makes me question all of the beliefs I had in the past. Mm -hmm. Was the city, is it really what it was or was it just uh, me drawing these conclusions on behalf of the city? And I also spend more time looking at my photographs again because I get to photograph some spaces now and I want to use like an old photograph to reference like a before and after. In my career as a photographer, I'm seeing new things like, oh wow, this is such a gem of photo. I never paid attention to it because at the time I was caring for maybe the line and now I can see other things. But it has also exposed Lagos through a different kind of beauty, which I strongly, which I, you know, I'm warming up to. I'm warming up to, as you can see, I shot color. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. normally want to shoot color. <laughs> So yeah, the war still continues, but it's been pivoted to a digital space and we're here for it. I guess my COVID experience has been quite different in that um, I have a, a studio in, in Johannesburg, which I haven't been able to visit for the last five weeks. Um, and so it was a bit of a shock for me to have to um, 
grab a few things from my studio and, and uh, move to my back to my old home studio. And because a lot of my, my work is to some extent about movement and, and travel, as I mentioned, uh, being unable to move at all uh, gave me uh, something of a, a, a lurch uh, creatively. I think I'm beginning to find my feet again, but uh, certainly I, I went through uh, something of a slump with all the transition, but uh, I was able to finish a, a series that I'm quite pleased with, and I've now started to produce a, a series of works which are, are much smaller and, and more domestic. And in fact, the, the latest works, uh, I've called them the insiders, um, <laughs> because that's, I guess, what we all are at the moment. <laughs> but I hope soon to be able to balance those with the series called the outsiders. Okay. <laughs> I was going to check in and say, ask you how you're coping, because this must be a lot of, uh, being in limbo is not your style, my mate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've touched on this in various ways, but what connections you've formed through your art, but uh, visually, socially, and internally. So like in all these different dimensions. So not only with each other, but like, for instance, logo you and the subjects you photograph or internal kind of reflections. Like I mean, there's been, there's been layers of connections. So being able to now participate in an existing space, in an existing art world space, whether within Lagos or globally, and uh, being able to now go from there to being recognized as, oh, that's the photographer. Every time I show up my camera in neighborhoods that would usually be aggressive, you know, neighborhoods where my colleagues will go to and they will get into a lot of problems. I literally just show up in those spaces and everybody's like, oh, that's that guy with his camera. That's a huge, huge connection that it's not, it's not, a, it's not a single situation. It's from a multiple scenario of proving oneself within whatever space that we've been playing in. Uh, one of the greatest connection that my friendship and collaboration with Richard created as well was... Um, as a photographer, you're very, very visual based and the visual needs to make a certain amount of sense um, for you to think that you stumbled on something. As, as valid as that has been, it has also robbed a lot of photographers the ability to see another form of beauty that exists in their work. Mm -hmm. Not until I collaborated with Richard that I finally had the guts to even attempt a studio practice. It also like an inner eye gets activated. Being able to be still in a friendship and artistic collaboration has also been a very good connection for me in terms of um, how, I, how, I, how I approach my work now. It's less about the ego of feedback, but more about touching on something deeper, you know, which would have been impossible without the collaboration, without the artistic connection as the case may be. Also commercial relevant. I mean, I, I'm a Lagosian, commerce is key. <laughs> Richard? Um, yeah, so I guess for me, the, the key uh, in this, well, in the collaboration with Logo has been sort of the intellectualism that he has brought to, to our conversations and to uh, my practice, so which has uh, been enormously valuable to me. Um, and I think we, through um, our, our conversations um, and not just physical collaborations, I think we both explored an enormously important set of issues around you know, how the art world works, the kind of the role of, of politics in, in the art world and in our work and in the world in which we operate. And so for me, there's this uh, relationship between how we engage with our communities, how we engage with the, 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 the politics of art, and then how we engage with our practice. And I think uh, having a, a confidant and, and someone to to talk to on, on those dimensions has been incredibly valuable to to my development as as an artist. Thank you. It's like um, being a good four years. It's a, it's a huge amount of change in one person's life. Whether COVID likes it or not, um, things would still happen interestingly. And uh, fast fasting your seatbelt. Maybe you create a nice show for us when we're done. <laughs> Great. I need to get out of this uh, neighborhood now. I just want to go for a quick drive. Yo, I've got my sticker. I'm an official press for the government on this issue. They nice. can't touch me. <laughs>